Hi, my name is Dr. Dominic Rowley and I'm the medical director of letsgetcheck.com. I'm also a, a consultant physician in genital urinary medicine, which in other countries is called infectious diseases. I'm here today to talk to you about gonorrhea infection. Gonorrhea is a sexual infection or an STI caused by a bacteria called Neisseria gonorrhea. The reason we're talking today about it is because it's on the rise. It's a, a nasty uh, STI and also there's problems in treating gonorrhea at the moment. So gonorrhea is spread through any form of sexual contact. Obviously the most common ways are through oral sex, vaginal sex and anal sex. So what are the symptoms of gonorrhea in men? Well the symptoms of gonorrhea in men are fairly similar to the symptoms of chlamydia in men. The first symptom would be uh, an unusual discharge from the penis. This could be yellow or greenish or it can sometimes be white or cloudy appearance in your urine. The second most common symptom would be a very painful sensation when you pee. A third symptom or sign of gonorrhea infection would be a painful uh, testicle. This testicle may become swollen, it may be red to look at, it may be very hot to touch. If you have gonorrhea in your throat, occasionally you have a sore throat, but most of the time with gonorrhea in your throat, there's no symptoms at all, unfortunately. If you've gonorrhea in your anal passage or your bum, you can get a discharge or you can get a bleeding from your bum. So they're the most common symptoms of gonorrhea in men. So what are the symptoms of gonorrhea in women? Well, the symptoms of gonorrhea in women are most commonly an unusual vaginal discharge. Many women have a vaginal discharge anyway. So we always ask our patients, is it an unusual discharge for you? So is it yellow or is it greenish? They would be common colors of a, of a discharge due to gonorrhea. The second most common symptom for women would be unusual bleeding. They may have bleeding during af or after sex or in between the periods. The third very common symptom would be pain during sex. Uh, a fourth symptom for women would be pelvic pain. So this is the area around or beneath your belly button, down to around your vagina. There can be a dull uh, ache or it can be a sharp stabbing pain. So the pain comes in different forms and that's pelvic pain. Um, they'd really be the most common symptoms of women. But of course, if you're having anal sex as a woman, you may also have a discharge from, from the anal area. And again, oral sex, you may have a sore throat. So most people with gonorrhea will have symptoms. So the symptoms, as we mentioned, would be an unusual discharge. So if you attend your family physician or you attend a specialist doctor, the doctor will probably do one of two things. They may take a swab um, to diagnose gonorrhea, or and they may also take a urine sample to diagnose gonorrhea. So both are equally useful. It is important at this point to mention though, that because uh, gonorrhea is becoming resistant antibiotics, which we'll mention later in the video, it is important that your doctor, if you have a discharge, does take a swab. And a swab is, a, is, is basically a stick with a little cotton wool at the top, and they send that off to the laboratory, as well as a urine test. So as I mentioned above, the reason gonorrhea is so serious is because it's getting more resistant to antibiotics. This mean, when I say resistant, this means in medical terms that we are running out of antibiotics to treat gonorrhea with. For example, 10 years ago, it was it's very simple to treat gonorrhea. You just took two tablets and then it was gone. Easy. Now we need to give you an injection in your bum as well as giving you two tablets. So we're, we're constantly having to increase the amount of antibiotics we give you. So the treatment to, to, in summary for gonorrhea is you, you need an injection in your bum and you also need to take tablets in, uh, and by the mouth or the oral form. So gonorrhea is not like herpes. Gonorrhea is like chlamydia. It is completely treatable. That is once you get the appropriate antibiotic treatment but it is completely treatable. Sometimes when you have gonorrhea in an unusual place, um, what we do is we do a thing called a test of cure to make sure the gonorrhea has gone away. And this normally happens about three weeks after uh, finishing your treatment. One of the common questions I get as a sexual health physician is, when can I have sex again? So it varies slightly for each infection, but basically the rule of thumb is, you wait seven days from the day you finish your antibiotic treatment. But don't forget, some antibiotic treatments are, go on for one week, or one day, one week, two weeks, three weeks, and some go over, are spread over three weeks. So you must ask your doctor, but generally the rule of thumb is you wait seven days from the day you finish your antibiotic treatment. One common question that I get as a sexual health phys uh, physician or as a doctor is, why are undiagnosed or untreated STIs or sexual infections so serious, particularly for women? 
Um, the reason is for, uh, because they can cause the following conditions. The first condition uh, we would talk about is PID or pelvic inflammatory disease. Number two or the second condition that we would talk about is ectopic pregnancies. The third condition that undiagnosed SCIs can cause uh, is decreased fertility or infertility. And the fourth condition or a symptom uh, undiagnosed STIs can cause is chronic pelvic pain. So, what is PID or pelvic inflammatory disease? Well, your pelvis is your area around your belly button that leads down to your genitals. So in women, that's down to your vagina. So PID is where you get this chronic infection or inflammation of all the organs around the pelvis. Those organs would be your ovaries, your fallopian tubes, they're the tubes that carry the eggs from the ovaries to the uterus. Your uterus can become inflamed, your upper vaginal tract can become inflamed. So that's the general area. So chronic inflection or inflammation of that area, you can get pus or lots of bacteria around there. Um, this can lead to scarring and then this can lead to what we call in medicine adhesions or where things become stuck together in the wrong place. So that basically is a summary of what pelvic inflammatory disease is. Now, number two, ectopic pregnancy. The definition of an ectopic pregnancy is basically where a pregnancy occurs outside of the uterus or outside of the womb. So a pregnancy isn't occurring where it can naturally occur. And the reason for this is again, because of pelvic inflammatory disease, because of lots of scarring and adhesions and things sticking together in the wrong place, the egg and the sperm don't meet each other in the correct place and a pregnancy occurs outside the, the uterus. Now, the reason this is so uh, serious is because it, this can lead to, first of all, infertility. It's obviously very upsetting for a woman and her partner if this occurs. And also it can be a medical emergency requiring an urgent medical admission and it can more require a major surgical operation as well. The third condition or problem with undiagnosed STIs in women is reduced fertility or infertility. And this again is as a result of all the things we spoke about, namely pelvic inflammatory disease, inflammation, infection, adhesions or scarring of the pelvic area where things are stuck together in the wrong place. And this can lead to the egg and the sperm not managing to meet each other and not um, completing a successful pregnancy. So this was a reduced fertility or infertility. The fourth condition or, or problem um, with undiagnosed STIs in, in women would be chronic pelvic pain. Now, chronic pelvic pain is what we call a kind of umbrella term to cover lots of different uh, symptoms. Um, it's due to, as we spoke about before, pelvic inflammatory disease where you have lots of adhesions and scarring and th uh, things are stuck to each other in the wrong area in the pelvis. This can cause a variety of symptoms for women that can be really unpleasant and can really affect your quality of life. Women can uh, experience dull, aching pain, particularly around the time of periods or in the lead up to the periods. Women can also develop um, stabbing sharp pain that may occur, occur during sex. And this is a really nasty complication that you don't want to happen. And for all the above reasons, this is why we recommend regular testing for all STIs for women. So in summary, if you're worried at all about any of the infections or any of the illnesses I've discussed, check out our website, which is www.letsgetchecked.com and we have a full team of nurses available who will answer any more questions you have and will advise you on, on the kind of the right or the appropriate test to buy.